There is an idea called a quantum computer, and uh, certain kinds of uh, effects have been discovered that could be put together to make a computer, except no one's been able to do that yet. My, I'm personally pessimistic that any useful quantum computer will ever be made. Seth but is I'm, not but skeptical. I'm, com I'm completely <laughs> in the uh, minority, because there's probably only about 1% of physicists, or a tenth of a percent, who feel like I do. Okay. Uh, so well, well let's, let, let's explore that for just a okay. second for the benefit of the audience. What is a quantum computer, Seth, and then we'll hear, yeah. hear Ed. So uh, a quantum computer, so we were talking earlier about quantum mechanics makes the universe, universe digital at some level. So the little word quantum means a little chunk of something. And it, for quantum computers, a chunk is a chunk of information. So if you take, uh, I don't have it, does anybody have any shades with them? Like some sunglasses? No. Well, anyway, so if you take, if you have polarizing sunglasses, what they do is that they'll take the photons that are coming through, which can be wiggling up and down any which way, and they'll take them so they're only polarized, wiggling back and forth like this. Or they could be, if you turn them like that, then they could be wiggling back and forth like that. So a bit of information is just anything that can have two distinct states, and you can call this state wiggling back and forth like that, zero, and you can call this state wiggling forth back and forth like that, one. So at bottom, every quanta, every photon or every electron has a set of discrete states, and you can call those bits. And then computers, as, as Ed was saying, all that they consist of are a bunch of bits that are flipped in a systematic way. But let me just stop you there. I mean, in the computer world, it's zeros and ones, so there are two discrete states. Right. In quantum mechanics, that's not the case. Right. So in quantum mechanics, you could have the photons polarized any way you want, but there are only two distinguishable states. So I can distinguish zero from one. That's what my ray bands do, OK? But if I take a photon that's like this, so halfway in between zero and one, and I put up my ray bands thinking, oh, are you zero or are you one? What will happen is half the time it will show up zero, and half the time it will show up one. So, so a quantum, like quantum computer would be a way of turning quantum phenomena from a series of discrete states into two discrete states, and then computing on the basis of how those events turn out. So, so uh, that's almost right. So, um, so hey, you know, come on, it's like. <laughs> no, hey, almost. I, I survive on almost in this, in this thing. I could have said, John, you're absolutely wrong. Yeah, and you wouldn't have been the first to do that, boy. <laughs> I thought of doing that. Anyway, so, so in quantum mechanics, you have this funny thing where things can be 0 and 1 at the same time. So this photon that's like that is, in some sense, both 0 and 1 at the same time. Quantum computers are like classical reversible computers of the kind that Ed was one of the inventors, uh, but they use, in addition to this discrete nature, this digital nature, they use this funny continuum in between continuum. And they use this funny ability to, do, to be zero and one at the same time to do computations in a way that no classical computer can do. And though Ed, I was looking skeptical before because Ed was saying he didn't believe a quantum computer would be built. Well, that's really untrue. I mean, we have built simple quantum computers, yeah. more like quantum <coughs> microprocessors, but we yeah. can build quantum computers okay. that, would, you know, that do quantum computations okay. on, say, up to a dozen bits and have been doing so let, now for let, almost a decade. Okay. If any of you are let, concerned let, about violence, you should leave now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Violent. Okay. <clears throat> the guy who invented... Uh, there's a big problem in both mathematics and for the NSA and the CIA. It's that they're secret codes and they want to break them, right? So it would be very nice if someone at NSA or CIA had a little machine, something comes in a secret code, he puts it in and it breaks the code. Well, there's a kind of code where, you, where the trick is you've multiplied two gigantic prime numbers together. These are numbers with 100 or 200 digits, and you multiply two of them together. And to break the code, you have to take that great big number and figure out which two numbers were multiplied together. Now, uh, it takes the biggest computers in the world, maybe for numbers that size, years to, to get the right answer. 
And you can always use bigger numbers, the 300 digits, okay. So quantum computing is an idea of building a computer that uses quantum mechanical principles and states. So a person named Shore came up with a fantastic algorithm where he showed if you had a quantum computer, you could trivially factor gigantic numbers. So he happened to come to MIT and gave his first talk, I happened to be there. This was 15 years ago about, okay? Someone asked me after the talk, what did I think? And I said, what I think is in 10 years, they'll announce that they have finally factored 35 into five times seven. And there's a reason for that. But I was overly optimistic. It's 15 years, and they'd only factored 15 into three times five so far. Actually, it was and seven times two, but then they, was, they figured out that they made a mistake. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> so, yes, and you can, you can get jobs figuring wait, that stuff wait, out? Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so far, billions of dollars have been spent supporting this research. And if you ask me, I think the results have been awfully interesting because they're discovering all kinds of things about quantum mechanical systems. So this pure research is paying off. The poor people who are putting up all the money aren't getting what they wanted, though. And that's OK. I don't mind. Oh, they're, so. <laughs> they're a grumpy bunch over at the NSA yeah. anyway, so, that's for no, sure. So the, the point is, you see, what I think the problem is that these physicists who hope to make a computer, um, w they didn't come from computer designers. And um, it sort of seemed obvious to me that the system worked in theory but couldn't be made practical. And I don't know, next year it might suddenly be practical. Or it might have been practical years ago and kept a secret. I don't Although, know for sure. Seth, the, the, well, we came to you, but you did, since you didn't believe in it, you refused to work on it. And look yes, at you right. now.